Hey everybody. Okay. So myself Vibhuti. <laughs> That's my name. So we'll be welcome to DMAX 2020 talk about AV1 and the R. So just a quick heads up that this is not related to arm and I am nowhere related to arm or this is not related to like the arm is just in sports or any things like that. So that's just the arm platform architecture things like that. So this talk is co scripted by myself and Luca Barbeto who is from team Vidaland in our team member. So let's get started without any further delay. right? So who am I? Myself Vibhuti as I mentioned earlier. So I am a Ravi contributor and among many other open source contributor contribution. So I am also a member and mentor at Mforce, which is a student driven club in India. It's one of the leading force club in India in Amrita University. So I am currently working as a research assistant in Trinity College Dublin in SIG Media Group. So you can contact me at mindfreeze at zip.org or at Twitter or anywhere whichever you like. So Luca Barbeto. So Luca is a long time one and a half decade back developer in multimedia. So he's a long time Ravi, David and many many other multimedia co products and things contributor. So unfortunately he couldn't make up as for the setup of the joint talk. So you can reach him out at lose0.gen2.org. So what are we going to talk today? So we'll be talking a lot about AV1. We'll be talking about ARM, we'll be talking about David, SVT, even Revy, LBM, and also most importantly, what's missing on AV1? What's missing about AV? What's missing in AV1 to make it shine in ARM? Right? So let's go forward. Okay. So AV1 is the next generation video codec standard published by Alliance of Open Media. We all know that, and we have been hearing that for the past two years or three years, maybe, but still, yeah. That's a cliche dialogue we should start right. So it's our first best compression about among all formats giving us around 30 to 50 percent efficiency or the past generation codex. Yeah so I don't need to get into deep about AV1 things because we have been hearing this for the past few years. Yeah as you heard like it's royalty free and open source. It's supported by large tech companies around the world including Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, Amazon, Samsung and many others around 43 members are there currently in the Alliance and some open source organizations are also there including Media Alliance. So coming back forward so they have been pledged towards the making the AV1 as the best thing out of which they can provide. So it's fairly fast for decoding and like it's more like production ready. We are done. Let's start decoding. Let's have it in the large scale. That's the state of AV1 decoding. So, ARM, um, yeah. So, I don't think again, I don't need to give a long speech about ARM at all because ARM is known by everyone. So, ARM is an architecture for its ubiquitous development for its mobile power devices, slow power devices, common normal commodity lab piece, normal commodity things, small scale servers, large scale servers, things like that. So, there's a long bright future for the arm for the laptop and the cloud that's in short okay so um so if we see the growth of the arm that's the thing here right so the arms growth is quite heavy so if we see closely it took around 22 years for the arm to ship 50 billion chips right so at the same time it took four years for shipping another set of 50 billion chips while we are expect arm is expecting to sell around 100 billion chips by the end of 2021 the growth of the arm is quite phenomenal if you see closely right the arm ecosystem is having around 1000 plus partners for including silicon developers design manufacturers software training consortium things like that thousand plus partners and having an ecosystem like that is a quite very large like the impact of the development and the ecosystem would be a tremendous things so the arm neoverse is a chipset production from the arm so it's having around 20% lesser efficient cost compared to x86 
similar instant and at the same time if we see the price to performance ratio it's around 40 percent higher so if we see in 2020 or uh, at the moment it's been in production in netflix hotel beds honeycomb and many many other places so so with the arm um, we can enable frictionless cloud native development that's a catchy thing so like what i mentioned in short is that it has support for language libraries let it be operating system let it be containers let it be runners let it be ca runners like jenkins gitlab github and things like that it has support for almost all places so if you see here right if you see closely there are around mainly five hardware producers at the moment for IV1 decoding one is realtech broadcom mediatek mediatek arm logic and rock chips so some of them are already in production and some of them are doing the production right so the mediatek is being mediatek p helio 1000 is having the latest chipset from mediatek so they have been powering smartphones and they have AV1 hardware decoding capabilities. At the same time, Broadcom chipsets do are based upon ARM and they have the AV1 decoding capabilities. Realtek is also having that. So as I was investigating about AV1 and ARM, so I have almost convinced that these are based upon the ARM architectures. So what's the state of decoding at the moment so if you see the case of decoding right so arms decoding as i mentioned it's almost great so it's already built in android 10 i mean android 11 android q right so it says media microsoft has already media extensions so if we see the browsers we already have the support in safari chrome firefox since one more than one year back it's also support for edge and even if you want to have AV1 in Safari, you can do that. And in the Linux and Mac OS machines, VLC has already support using the David. So it's quite super fast. YouTube is using AV1 for many of the videos, including 8K, right? So decoding in AV1. So if you see again, the latest C GPUs from NVIDIA and AMD do support AV1 decoding by default out of the box. And even the latest Intel's chipset in the Tiger Lake also has the support. Even the Google Duo has announced the support for AV1 early this year. Right. So if you see again in the earlier this year itself, Netflix has announced that the streaming in the mobile platforms for the low power mode uses David. So David you have been hearing me screaming about david for the past many times at least 10 or 20 times i haven't counted but still so david if you guys are hearing for the first time david is an av1 decoder so it was announced in 2018 vdd or video land developer days happened in Fra france so and also it was announced in dmax 2018 and again an update was given in dmax 2019 as a lightning talk so it was really interesting you can really watch that so it's used as all default av1 decoding in almost all platforms because it's production more or less like a production ready the goals of the david is like we need a good decoder yes we have david right so we need a fast decoder yes david is there why are we waiting so we need a small binary yes we have it so that's the goals of the david so almost all that's the thing which everyone wants right we don't want a big bloated binary we just need a small and fast very compact decoder which is fast that's the goal even the c version so david is having around more than 50 percent share of the code base for handwritten assembly so the people have been working day and night to have the handwritten assembly for the david so david c version is fast david has really great threading you should uh, you actually use that to see the performance and if you don't want to use just listen for next two minutes i will be saying how the threading is nice so one more notable point is that for the 10 and 12 or higher bit functions decoding for the hdr videos david has support for arm platform while in the take case of the x86 
it's not readily available i mean the handwritten assembly are not there completely if you see are lagging behind the arm so as i mentioned the speed up we can get the speed up in david in mostly by two types one is frame threading one is style threading so the frame threading is basically giving the frame to each style threads while the tile threading is just like the dividing the frames into slices then decoding that that's the tile threading concept in in the ec layman words so with the tile threading is the single thread we have been able to get more than 30 fps easily which is ready to share that it's fine we are decoding with software we don't need a hardware right that's the theory there so if you have the hardware yes we exploit that hardware we getting around more than 600 frame per second if you have goes to 60 cores right that's the threading capability of the david so that's the take that's a case of 1080 so let's go let's exploit the cpu more right we have we have 4k video how will you decode that yes we can decode that we are decoding around more than 100 frames by using less than 50 threads this is a software decoder which utilizes the cpu power to get the exp exponential super fast performance even in the case sorry i don't have an x86 machine i have an arm You're right we can do that that's the state of the david so david is having almost similar performance at the comparing to the thread rippers so this experiment was done at 2.8 clocks gigahertz for the both neoverse and the thread ripper so we have been trying to do this as an apple to apple comparison right that's the most important thing here so in the case this is without any assembly optimization that's a c code pure c code so we have the assembly handwritten assembly we have been saying for the past many times we enable that how much do we get how much do we get see how much we are getting around more than hundreds percent faster for most of the cases and sometimes more than 60 or 70 percent faster and it can even get around 300 percent faster that's the thing right so from if you see the same graph we are getting so in the case of let's say 30 threads it's around 60 to 70 so in the case of 30 threads it's around more than 100 at the same time that is nearly twice right 120 150 200 plus in that case of thread ripper while the case of neoverse we are getting around let's see closely that is around neoverse is having around 160 plus right that's the state so if we see so we have been repeating the experiment for a different kind of thing right so we have been using the frame threading tile threading for the david and also for the gav1 from google we they also have the support for tile threads and frame threads we do it the same and also this was experimented for the david in broadwell cpus the intel's old generation ones the cortex a72 which is a mobile cpus in the old road honey things like that and also the neoverse n1 cpus so if you see the graph thread ripper kills everyone with about more than 200 frames easily with half amount of threads and if you see the neoverse is having more than 100 frames that's fine we don't need more than 100 or 120 in the software without much right for the normal commodity use cases it's production ready that's what we have been saying so in the av so the let's say the encoding is always hard x264 took around like huge amount of time to make it good or great at the same time x264 took the industry adopted x264 as a golden standard it took around less than more than five years for sure around 10 years we can make it round right so it's easier to work so we can say it took around a decade to make it a standard in the case of x265 it was almost same the, for the development it for to become a great standard one it took almost six to eight to eight years and for adoption it's still a thing we all know what's the state of h26 hevc pattern pools things like that so it's hevc was a really great thing so the h 
the thing which we are saying here is that AV1 is no longer different comparing to the other things. It's having the past experience of libvpx family and SVT family using the SVT AV1 encoders and things like that. So people have been investing tremendous amount of time to make it amazing. That's the thing here. So let like going further. So we have been running short of time. We need to go fast. Like David, we need to go forward. <laughs> so, encoding in AV1 has been slow. We all know that. So, next thing we are, we are going to say is that how uh, how much are we slow here? So, Libbe Libbeam has proved us that we have the amazing video, but give us time. So, the SVT proved us we are fast, but we need X we need no no like X86. We want the X86 CPUs. Like the case of Ravi, Ravi is efficient, but not as efficient as others. Like the Ravi says, like it's written hand written from scratch in Rust. It tries to cover most use cases where the Libm or SVT are slow. It focuses on exploring like various things which wasn't explored in the past, and also it uses the past knowledge and experience of the Dala perpetual quality of improving quality of PSNR so and also it shares the handwritten David assembly so Ravi is written just like we said handwritten assembly for both platforms x86-64 and R64 so Ravi is like it's a, it can be used as a command line tool it's available already in almost all distros just grab the binary use it that's it so how are how, what's the state of Ravi in like the state of Ravi in the frameworks and in production. So VDLANS VLC has the support of FMPEC as an already library. Gstream has a plugin. LibAVAF, the, the classic, the next generation picture format has already support for Ravi. If you have a C or Rust API, we can use Ravi. So or even a notable thing to share is that Vimeo uses Ravi for making in production videos for staff pick videos. Right? So what to what we can expect from the ARM? Like the Libm has lot of neon specific code paths. SPT has almost zero. The Ravi has lots of path which is sometimes integrated for the future. Some are already integrated. So if we take case of the SPT, everyone if we see closely, we are getting around two FPS the graphs, which is using sixteen threads. If we did the experiment with eight threads also, eight tiles also, it's almost same. Like the speed of AOM without, so the in the case of AOM, like as I mentioned, there are a lot of SAMD codes. So in the AOM has been able to get around two times the speed without assembly using the SAMD. So it's getting around clocking around 2 to 2.5 from 1 to 1.2. While the Ravi using the Go parallelism technique using the Rayon framework we have been able to achieve around 3 to 3.5 FPS at the same time. So comparing the speed up so the Go parallelism was achieved by the Rayon framework as I mentioned earlier. So if we take case of the plain Ravi we are seeing the how much speed up are we getting the plain Ravi binary. So we are getting around with the assembly we are getting around more than 40 percent and the highest we got was in the speed zero around 60 to 70 70 percent we can say in the case of neoverse it's almost above 50 and for speed levels above 5 it's above 100 to 150 around 150 130 we can say so that's the state of AOM encoders so what's missing the SVT so after seeing the graph we can say that SVT is having lack of SAMD code paths so Libm has best SAMD support so far because we are getting around 2x speed right see the graph it's around 100% speed up is happening so the Ravi has partial SAMD but not integrated so coming back to the point so what's missing in ARM right the hardware decoders are missing so slowly hardware decoders are being coming up so high performance server platforms like we mentioned like the Neoverse is a thing which should be happening in a faster pace. Hopefully, it's happening. So, encoder specific optimization. The X SVT AV1 is super fast. Just have the encoder specific optimization in the ARM. 
so wide rod option is the arm um, desktop platforms that's a thing right apple has already said the apple silicon for the next generation macbook is based upon arm if you want the best thing for the arm as a wider platform yes by honeycomb it's fine it's super fast blazing fast thing right so the ampere computing offers so we got around 80 to 160 core cpus are there from the ampere computing it's super fast very really nice things like that so from this talk we can almost conclude that arm is really vital for growing so if people doesn't focus much on the arm it will become another chicken and egg problem and we are on the right track to solve this and if the people think so it will be really great and they, it will be the next thing in the future so if you have any question do drop us an email at mindfree at so also in the like comment i don't know where it will be like here or here or here so just in the like question answers do drop your questions we'll be happy to answer those thank you